but the whole point of that is to avoid, hey, send me a flatbed. It's getting it done, you get to a CHP call or something like that, they're not gonna, they're not gonna want to hear you say, I need a flatbed. They want to want you to get it done, whatever you gotta do. Let's go ahead and uh, something for Scott. Scott, back the truck up a little bit. Okay. Watch out, watch out. Paul's gonna get it. You need to get straight. Hey, back the truck up? No. We're gonna have to move that one. He's already got it. It's a ranger, you can't hurt it. <laughs> can't hurt it more than it's already is. That's good. <laughs> Alright, what kind of hook are we going to use on this car? J hook. Yeah, J hook will work fine on this particular one. T hooks too, if you got a car that doesn't have something, you can J hook too. Okay, so let's get our J hook on the lower, on the uh, rear axle housing. Somebody work on the other side? Go, go, Garouche. No, let them. Hey, hey, let them do it. Plastic on the front, you can't pick them up anyway. Really? 
Okay, yeah, you start to pick it up, you'll just deform the whole front end of the car. But if the car's already fucked up, just get the fuck yeah, out of it. Yeah, if it's an accident or something like that, yeah, you're getting out of the roadway. If it's already destroyed, then you really don't have much to worry about. Where this would mostly come in handy is when you have a, something that's too heavy for the wheel lift, but it's got a nice strong frame and bumper, then you can shorten the overhang. Because if we go to the tires, we've got to reach out another foot and a half, two feet. Right, so we can get some weight back to the front wheels by using a tow sling. Now, part of the tow sling uh, equipment is also two four by fours, a four foot and a five foot four by four that you might need to put underneath the, the uh, car on top of the chain so that the weight, some of the weight, sits on the four by four and sits on the frame instead of all of it on the bumper. Right, the four by four went across underneath the bumper. They also make spacer blocks that go on top of those four by fours to give you four more inches of clearance. So maybe you have an exhaust pipe that comes out underneath here. You can put those uh, spacer blocks in there so the pipe can come out still and the board won't hit the uh, exhaust pipe. So two, two four by fours, a five foot and a four foot, and then spacer blocks are part of the equipment for a swing tow. And then two chains, uh, each 10 feet long with a J hook at one end and a grab hook and T hook at the other. Okay, did you guys take your outfit on the hook down there? Okay, so then we would put it in neutral and take the brake off before we lift it off the ground. <laughs> this 
case, don't be afraid to get down on the ground and lay down because you will be. Especially with cars. Oh, yeah. Don't run my feet over. Don't run my feet over. That's what it's worth me on the highway. Trying to get as far as you can. That's right, back the damn wheel up to it. If I got to use those chains, I'll hook those up, leave that away from a little bit, hook them on the loops, and fucking lift it with the wheel lift. Mm -hmm. oh. I, haven't, I haven't rolled the tow bar off my truck in I don't know how long. I got little <laughs> sport J hooks with about a foot of chain on them that work perfect. You just hook them right on, butt up against the tires, hook them on, loop them off, lift it, and go. Cuts down the time in the. Uh, oh, I thought that truck was rolling away by itself. Oh, that would have been bad. <laughs> well, it's aiming right. It's aiming right for a trash can and an ex tow truck. And that one just happens to have a push bumper on it. This thing would have got fucked up. right next to the highway you can't move it over anymore or can't move anything over anymore so they're like laying on the ground i'm close trying to find the spot to that's where you get up in there you get something hooked onto it you get it up on the bed get one thing one one chain or something attached to the back just to keep it from moving long enough to get it off the freeway well i i had just gotten down i was going to wrap it around the axle i was on this boat and fucking truck just yeah they were so right you're going to watch out like, for those God jackasses damn it. It's the semi guys that'll kill us. The oh, semis out in Arizona, they're pretty good at moving over. Here they're not. That's because of that fifty dollar fine. I think Arizona, it's, uh, it's not fifty bucks though. Really, if you get the ticket once the court fees are on it, it's like three four hundred dollars. Oh, is it? Yeah, you gotta. Add, that, that's just a base fine for the ticket. Every ticket here has a base fine. Cell phone tickets got twenty dollar base fine. But when you add the court fees and shit to it, you're talking two three hundred dollars already. Fair enough. Same thing with the safety chain tickets, a $50 fine, but when you have the court fees, it gets to about $250. That's what they don't tell you about the fine is, well, they're going to tack on other shit that you got to pay for as well. Yep. Your fine's not really $50. Bucks. If it was only $50, then you know, maybe people would just say, fuck it, I'll pay the $50. Bucks. Yeah, I wouldn't like that. But then there's a point system, too. You rack up too many tickets in a short amount of time span, and you lose your license. Yep, it's the license. I don't know. You know, after that whole incident, I wait until if I have like a clear distance, I'll wait yeah, for every I, I, did, I avoid, I avoid it at very best is fucking getting under a car if I can. You know, maybe I'll squat and reach under, but I will avoid laying down on the side of the freeway, especially if I'm not close to traffic. My, 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 my whole thing is I will avoid taking my eyes off traffic at all. You know, if I'm gonna lay under a car, it means I have to take my eyes off traffic. Well, fuck that. And as soon as you do that, something's yeah, that's when shit's happen. gonna happen. I'm gonna at least be able to see when I gotta get up and start running. Uh, the guy I was uh, riding with, learning from, there was actually a time I was on the other side. He had to jump onto the bed. Oh, well, that's that's also why it's better to uh, work off the passenger side, especially if you're next to a wall. And one thing you can keep in mind when you're doing that is, if something does come at you, duck, get under the bed. It's you've got you've got a box there between the frame and the wheels and the bed. You get up in there, yeah, you might not get out for a minute because <laughs> they're gonna have to pull the truck away from you. But your chance of you getting hurt or not because you have that buffer zone right in there. If that thing hits the wall, the bed's gonna stop, the wheels gonna stop, and you've got a couple of feet in that little little, little crevice. spot there, a little crevice there between the frame. You just get small and find a hole to get into. If you're on the driver's side, yeah, you got to get away from that side because the car's going to go under the bed. Yeah, we had that. We had that happen to one of our drivers. Car came up the shoulder side. He was going to use the shoulder, and driver was there loading up, and driver saw it. Driver heard the 